We're delighted here at CBS that she'll star in the film Unlikely Angel. She also has a CD current in release, which is called Treasures. And it's a pleasure as we open our holiday season here to welcome Dolly to our show. Thanks for coming over. Well, nice to see you. Thank you for having me. You have two Christmases. You have one here, and then you have one back in Tennessee. I'm told you've only missed one in all the years in Tennessee. Well, I've never been out of Tennessee for Christmas, but I have uh, missed a Christmas back home. I, I live in Nashville now, which is... Uh, my home is 200 miles east of mm -hmm. there, where my folks all live. So the first year I left home in 1964, I was in Nashville, didn't have the money to go home, so I was so lonesome I could cry, as Hank Williams would say. <laughs> but ever since then, I've always, you know, been with family. Now, I'm told that during the holiday season, you create a character which you lovingly call Granny Claus. Tell me about Granny Claus. Who <laughs> well, is she? Well, first of all, all of my nieces, I had five of my younger brothers and sisters. There's 12 of us kids, mm -hmm. and five of my younger brothers and sisters lived with me and my husband for many years, and so when they married and had children, they were like my kids, so their, their children were like my grandkids. So I thought, well, what can they call me and my husband, Carl? So they called me Aunt Granny and my husband, Uncle Peepaw. So because they, <laughs> the little ones just call me Granny, they yeah, don't yeah. even put the aunt. So I have to be Granny Claus. I dress up in my Santa suit because I'm a bigger kid than anybody else and I love Christmas. So I have dressed like Santa Claus for years and years and years with my high heel black boots and my belt and the hat, the whole work. Good for you. Yeah. Good. And you give out toys and presents and goodies yeah. and candy. Huh? In fact, I have an elevator in my house in wow. Nashville uh, uh, that goes like three floors. It's just a, and so I have the bottom part painted like fireplace. So it's like I get on the elevator with my granny cloth suit. The kids go down in the you come bottom down the part. Chimney. I come down the chimney, come out of the <laughs> elevator, and it's all painted, so it's perfect. That is perfect. Yeah. What a difference from Christmas as a girl with your family in Tennessee, because you had very little money at the time. I've read about you. You were poor as church mice, all of you. <laughs> and I guess dad and mom made Christmas presents for you and for your brothers and sisters, huh? Yeah, you know a lot about me. Yes, I do. Yeah, but we grew up back in the Smokies, and, and most of the families there didn't have any money, but you had a lot of good stuff, and, and most of the people were very religious, and most of the families made toys. The moms were real good. My mom was a great cook. She also was very creative, and she used to make sock dolls and cob dolls. Sure, and Dad used sure. to whittle out wooden toys. How close was the town that you grew up in to Gatlinburg, Tennessee? Uh, well, it was very close. I would say five. I didn't grow up in a town, but the nearest town was Sevierville, Sevier County. Oh, sure, sure. I've and, been there. I've yeah, been there. Yeah, and Gatlinburg then is on uh, from Sevierville. It's it's probably 15 miles. That is truly miles. one of the most beautiful parts of our country. Uh, th that that part of Kentucky, and it, to go up in, in the mountain yeah. or in Tennessee, and to go up in the mountains there. I remember we went one time outside of Gatlinburg to a little town. It was a home of somebody called the Walker Sisters. And they were like 104, and they lived in they lived in their house, and the state supported them, and they had the kettle with the sticks outside over the fire with the kettle hanging, and they yeah. did all their wash and stuff in there, and, and they lived on a little river, did their clothes in the river. It was unbelievable. But you know, we lived that way in my early days. We lived back in in the mountains, and. People just raised their own foods. We we did our own washing. We made we washed our clothes in those big black kettles, and sure. then we made uh, hominy, and we also made soap for the winter Any time. Any moonshiners so, back there? Well, we made moonshine too. My dad, my dad in his <laughs> early days, truly, when he he and my mom first married, he didn't do it to be illegal. You made it to try to feed your families. A lot of people don't realize that you know a lot of that was a lot of good people made moonshine. A lot of good people made moonshine that didn't drink it. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of them did. But my dad in his early days made a little moonshine. And what was his favorite uh, moonshine to make? Do you recall? I, I remember there was a fellow that we used to go to when I lived in Atlanta. We'd go up north of uh, north of uh, Dahlonega, Georgia, in a little town up there, and there was a fellow that made peach brandy that was absolutely, unbelievably delicious. Well, a lot of people And it was five did. bucks a gallon. I think my dad and them used just used the the corn, like the corn oh, sure, mash, sure. that that old real. I guess that's the white lightning moonshine. But there's a lot of people who make good moonshine whiskey. It's pretty stout stuff, but you know, I guess you got to do something in the mountains or die of boredom. <laughs> <laughs> a little moonshine cures yeah, the boredom. I found. Yeah. <laughs> now, wasn't there one Christmas when your dad uh, sat you all down with your brothers and sisters and he said, "Look, I, I want to buy mom a ring, and that means no presents." Well, yes, that was many years ago. My mom had a house full of kids, and she didn't even have a wedding band. They got married when my mom was 15 years old. My dad was 17. They started having babies, and when mom was 35 and daddy was 37, they already had 12 kids. But midways through that marriage, and I was, I'm one of the uh, older children, but there was probably five, six, seven of us at home. 
and Dad told us that he wanted to buy Mom a wedding band, and that meant that there wouldn't be any candy and yeah. anything to spend money. But he did buy one big box of chocolate candy. He said he had one present for everybody, and that was the first year we had electricity, so it was the first year we had a real tree with electric lights, and he hid the ring behind one of the... The bugs, oh, yeah. and so we got whoever but, but, found the ring. But what a huge day, huh? Yeah, it was what a, a huge great day. day, and so uh, he also the one that got the ring had to share the candy that was in the Christmas spirit. But they got to eat more of it than everybody. Can else. you imagine if your mom and dad were starting out today? Could could they have accomplished what they accomplished then? Do you think? I mean, when you think about the obstacles your mom and dad overcame, raising twelve of you. Well, I think if living in the city, I don't think that they would have made it. But living in the country like we did, mountain people just know how to make a living. You are a part of the woods and the trees and you know how to scratch a living out of that dirt up there. Does that ever leave you no matter how successful <clears throat> you get? I don't think so. You, you could still fact, do that probably, huh? I could. That's, a, that's one good thing. I'd hate to have to. Sure. I'd hate to have to give up these nails and all that. <laughs> but if I had to scratch out a living with them, I do believe I could. I'm not, I know how to plant a garden. I know the time of year to plant. I know how to raise food. I know how to can it. I still do a lot of my own canning like Loretta Lynn in the summer. I love to can beans and berries and stuff just like we used to. Yeah, yeah. Just for fun. Let now. me ask you here about Unlikely <laughs> Angel. This is a picture in which you play somebody who's died and gone to heaven, <laughs> and then you come back. How, how does that work? Well, it's probably as close to heaven as I'm going to get. Uh, I don't know. I'll I hope stop. not. But anyway, it's a story about a, a country singer that's just kind of make trying to make it, never makes it big. She sings in the honky tonk. So she's she works for this guy that owns this nightclub, and so she finds him with another guy. She speeds away. She gets killed on the way leaving. So she goes to heaven, and Roddy McDowell, who plays St. Peter, I wind up somewhere I don't know where I am. And so he uh, gives me a second chance, so to speak, but I have to come back to Earth, be a nanny, to put this dysfunctional family back together that's lost their uh, mother. And so the male lead is Brian Kerwin, who's a wonderful guy, an actor, and a beautiful girl named Maria Del Mar, two wonderful kids, a little... Yeah, but uh, you mentioned Roddy McDowell. What a, oh, class, what a classy gentleman he is. It, he is, and he plays. He gets to play like five different parts. So St. Peter has to come back to Earth to kind of keep me in order, keep uh -huh. me in line. And so uh, he's. In fact, I brought a little clip. I don't know if you're going to show that now. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. this is just this, one this little part time. where one of the characters he plays, and after I've, he's he's kind of let me down two or three times. He's not giving me much help, and I'm real mad at him. And this is something that's happened, and this is when he always shows up when I'm in big trouble. Okay, here's Roddy McDowell and uh, and Dolly Parton, and the angel earns her wings, sort of. Here's a <laughs> I like the line, God has big hair and little feet. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought it'd be too sacrilegious. I was yeah. going to say, God has yeah. big boobs and little yeah, feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or big hair, but yeah. anyway. what, what about your brothers and sisters? How often do you see them? Often? Well, I see some of them uh, more often than others. Sure. But everybody still lives in Tennessee. Uh, all of them just about live up in East Tennessee. I have uh, two sisters that live in Nashville and one that comes back and forth. But I see uh, my sisters a lot more than my brothers. But I go home about four times a year, so I see them at least four times a year. And I'm sure they all enjoy your success, huh? Well, they're very proud of me, and they I'm very be. proud of them. But I, my music is a gift in my family, so I'm certainly not the most talented one in my family. I've been lucky that I've been successful, but we have a lot of good writers and singers. As a matter of fact, I read about you this afternoon when you made your little speech at your high school graduation ceremony. You, you made a prediction. <laughs> what, what, what did you say? Well, actually, that was a pretty embarrassing moment. I got up when everybody was saying what they were going to do, like they were going to college sure. or they were going to nursing school, and I said, I'm going to Nashville to be a star. <laughs> and I was so honest and sincere, that's where I was going the very next morning, and everybody laughed. They were sniggering and laughing, like, and I thought to myself, you know, I was very embarrassed and it hurt my feelings, and, and I, you know, but that kind of, I thought, well, I have to be a star now because I have right. to show them that. And I'm when you got to Nashville, how <laughs> tough was that? It, it, you, you had good fortune early on in Nashville. Well, I did, but I spent, uh, I guess any hard times seemed to last a, a lifetime, but I walked the streets. I went hungry quite a few months, and uh, I did get lucky. I was luckier than most, and I, I got a contract as a songwriter and got on salary so I did uh, I mean within the first year mm -hmm. and then after that but the first few months I was so lonesome and so homesick and I wanted to go home so bad but I thought well you know there's nothing at home except my family and I'll always have them and sure. I'll always love them but if I give up now I'll never make it so no and I have I to go back and look at all those people yeah. I told I was going to go to Nashville and be a star exactly and go. I told my mom when I left I said I'll be coming back a star 
in all innocence, it wasn't arrogance. It was just, I, I just thought that's what I was going to do, and thank God I, I did. We are with Dolly Parton, who could be seen in Unlikely Angel on CBS on the 17th. The new CD is out now in release. It's called Treasures, and we'll be right back with all of you on the toll-free. Uh, for those listening on radio, it's 800-952-2788. That's 952-2788. Back after this break. Back with Dolly Parton. Here's John on the toll free in Tampa, Florida. Hi, John, and welcome to CBS. Good evening. Tom, you're the greatest. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. Happy holidays to you. Thank you. Same to you, Thanks. Dolly. I loved your recent special, and your new album is great. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask you, as an entertainer myself, sometimes there are dark times when you don't know whether you're ever going to make it. And I know that coming from where you were, you had to have drive. What, what, what gave you the strength to go on, and what, what do you do to, to keep yourself going when those times sometimes are not as good as they can be? Well, it's always hard, but you just have to have faith in your talent. You have to have faith in yourself, and you have to have faith in God, in my case. I've, I always had my family to lean back on and my faith in God. So there's a lot of times you feel like you're not going to make it, but if it means that much to you, somehow you'll find that extra strength and just keep, keep with it. You're the greatest. Thank you, and good luck to you. <laughs> Thanks for we calling, John. Have, have a great holiday season, young Thank man. Thank you, you too. Good okay. night. Bye-bye. You mentioned your husband. Few people know you've been married for 31 years to the yeah, same man. Yeah, sure have. Be th 31 years this And uh, I know you don't talk about it because your husband likes his privacy. He does. I do talk about it more than he'd like, but he's a great guy. He's my best buddy. We've been together for 32 years. Mm -hmm. Been married for... Um, Coming, coming up on 31. His first marriage and my first marriage, and I imagine it'll be the Probably last. Probably be your only marriage, if, too. I'm sure it will be. But there are no little dollies. No, we couldn't have children. Oh. And so, but we've had a house full. You right. know, we've, we've raised everybody's kids. And so we're there. I think if we'd probably had kids, we wouldn't have had it, you know, we wouldn't have had so much to give to some of the others. So I think God knows what he's doing, and he works with different people doing different things. So we look at it that way. You know, a lot of women who would be having the birthday that you're having or had this year would be terrified of it. This, this, I mean, for guys, 50 supposedly is a <laughs> big, big birthday, and you seem to be gliding past this thing with absolutely no effort or concern whatsoever. Huh? Well, I turned 50 in January, so I'll be coming up on 51 Jeez, before You're really getting long. old, aren't you? Yeah, I'm really getting but I'll be glad to be 51 so I won't ever have to be 50 I, I again because everybody know. made such a big to-do. I don't feel any different than I ever did, and I don't know that I'll look all that much different. And so I think it's all in how you spend your time. I hope I can grow old gracefully, and I try to keep myself up as best I can. And I don't, like I say, I don't well, what, feel what, what, any what, what do you do to keep yourself up? I mean, you look terrific. Your skin looks terrific. Your hair, I mean, you just look terrific. Well, thank you. I, um, there's more where this came from. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you wear it sometime and all that stuff. No, but I do There are whatever. a lot of guys who yeah. love to wear it. I see them on Halloween, but I'm not oh, one of them. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I see more Dolly Partons on Halloween. It is so funny. I go, I go down on Santa Monica Boulevard yes, here. I mean, it's like I go down there, and they just think I'm another one of them. I can have a big time. They just think, God, you know, you made a good Dolly. I think, thank you. But anyhow, I do whatever I need to do. If I need to do some collagen or a skin peel or whatever, sandblasting, whatever I need to do, I do it. Little nip and tuck here and there. So really? it's like, well, I'm, I look at myself like a show dog. I gotta keep myself up, you know? Yeah, and like I, like I read your quote, you're not trying to look younger, you just wanna look better, Yeah, right? I'm just, they, they say I'm obsessed with looking younger. I said, no, I'm committed to looking better or committed to looking as good as I can, and, as and, long as I can. And how long does it take you from the time, well, like when you get up in the morning and, and you have to become Dolly, how fast can you become Dolly? Because how fast I, can I become Dolly? Yeah. I can be completely ready, made up, out the door and gone in 15 to 20 minutes. You're kidding. If I'm in a hurry, if I have to do it. Now, I like to have a good hour, like all women do, to take my bath, to do sure, the makeup, absolutely. to do the hair. But, you know, I just, I can slap my makeup on in no time because I got it down pat and I just jump under a wig and head out. And, 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 and when would you have less hair than you have tonight? When would I? Yeah. As soon as I get to the house. <laughs> Or shortly after. <laughs> now, actually, my I, my own hair is the same color. I keep it the same length, and mm -hmm. I can do my own hair the same way. It's just that you know, it's just so handy. You like Plus, to put it on. Yeah, and you know, the, all the wear and tear with all the teas, and you know, I used to wear my own hair the sure, same way, but sure. it's just like 
pretty damaging. Plus, it takes too long, and I don't have the time. You know, somebody showed me a clip of a, a video show where the guy was the magician. And you know, at the end of every magic act, there's a ta-da, and, and whatever <laughs> happens, happens. And as it happened, his hair came off. Ah! So, so they, had, they had to reshoot it, and the poor guy was mortified. Oh, it was in front know, of him. Yeah. You know Has it, it ever? <clears throat> well, I've had a few hair-raising experiences, <laughs> if you'll pardon the expression. Once this little guy that I was, I was in this show called the Porter Wagoner Show. Porter, oh, sure. Porter sure. was the guy that gave me my first big break in country music. And he had this little dancing fiddle player named Mac McGahey, and Mac was so hyper and spastic, and he, he was a great fiddle player, but he just couldn't be still. He was just all over the stage with his little fiddle. <laughs> and I had on one of these little cascades, the hair pieces. Yeah, yeah. And thank God I had on a lot of hairspray, and it's just matted together, but he got his bow hung up, and in my hair, and I just <laughs> kind of lifted it up. <laughs> but there was enough spray, and it kept some of the hairs together. It didn't completely come off on the bone. <laughs> I was like pulling my hair down. <laughs> so I've had a few things. Once I was riding a bike with my nieces, and I had on this little wig, and we went under a tree, and it, it was hanging there. <laughs> and we just, I just kept going. <laughs> they thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Of course, they see me with it and without it, but it's just so funny, my hair hanging in a, yeah, hanging right. on a bush. Yeah. We just went back and got it. We just rode back by. <laughs> And jumped under it. <laughs> but you never uh, just just whip it off and just just for the sheer joy of it. No, Tom, and I'm not doing it now. Uh, no, I, 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 <laughs> you can forget it. No, I wasn't even in my <laughs> mind. I swear. To you. It, it, it. <laughs> What's the old line we used to use behind guys' backs if they wore a rug? You know, stop it or I'll pull the rug right out from over you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that that can work. <laughs> But anyway, I do enjoy wearing the wigs. I love all the makeup and, and all that. So, But the good thing is, I mean, I, I probably look the same when I'm 100 because I'm more like a cartoon than anything else. I love to paint and powder, and I love to have a look, and hopefully it'll always be my look. Yeah, but I hope to God that you like the way you look when you go home and you take it oh, off. Oh, I do. Okay, I'm good. very that, comfortable yeah, with myself. That there's the, there's the, there's the caricature oh, sure. and then there's scary. the real you. Yeah. No, you're not scary there's at all. the real me. But, I mean, I just enjoy all the makeup and the play. It's like a kid play. I guess I just, I always wanted to do this when I was a kid. Uh -huh. I always wanted to have makeup and fancy clothes and, and look like the queens and the movie stars. And so I still enjoy it. I understand. You yeah. know, I, until I had my daughter, I never understood the hair and makeup gene. But now I fully understand it. Yeah, you know? and you have a little granddaughter that's and she, six and a half. Uh, She'll probably she just... Has, she's got it now, as a matter of fact. And like I know women who've never had sons, they have sons, and they say, where did the truck gene come from? I said, it's, it's built into us. It's right there, yeah, you know, trucks and trains. That's, and that's of, sort of stuff. Of times, yeah. We are chatting with, uh, with the irrepressible Dolly Parton, who stars in Unlikely Angel on CBS on the 17th and has a CD out now, which is called Treasures. Back with you on the toll-free on radio and television at 800-952-2788 after these messages. With Dolly Parton, here's our pal Pat on the toll-free in West Palm Beach, Florida. Hello. Hi. Hi, Pat. Uh, how you doing, Dolly? Well, I'm just um, fine. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I've got nine kids, so don't be worried about not having kids. <laughs> you want to give me some of yours? Oh, gladly. <laughs> okay. uh, I want to ask you, uh, you've worked with quite a few uh, really handsome guys. Uh, who is your favorite? Well, I loved them all for different reasons, but I was just telling Tom when we were off the air, uh, we have a mutual friend, James Woods. I said, he's definitely the best kisser. Everybody always wants to know who's the best kisser because you get to kiss all these great-looking guys. So he was a great guy, but I really enjoyed working with all of them. I, I find something great about everybody. Is I try it, to. Is it hard to get in the mood to kiss a man that you really don't know while the cameras are rolling? Like, I, I love the picture you did with Jimmy Woods. Straight Talk, was it uh -huh, called? Where yeah. you played the radio yeah. uh, uh, advisor, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. And he played the newspaper man. But yeah. it is. It's, it's awkward. And I think that's one of the reasons I enjoyed kissing him in that movie, because he made me comfortable. Because I, I'm not a real actress, and I've never had lessons, and I don't know where to stand, and I'm always so self-conscious when it comes to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I felt like I was really kissing him. It wasn't like really in a movie. Like it right. is with some like I know when I did Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, oh, I worked Bert. with Burt Reynolds. Oh yeah. And, and Burt wore a mustache, and it had he had it blackened with that stuff. And we did that big crying scene. And I will always love you when we left. And so Burt kissed me, and when they pulled back, my face was just as black as star. <laughs> As if you Where had he been. kissed me, I was just like I looked like I'd been sucking a sow. You know, it was like just, just a little dirty face, like a little pig's face. <laughs> but 
But I, but I, I really I like don't want to go there, I'll tell you. Oh, that's all right. You don't have to go there. I done been. <laughs> I can save you that trip. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you, I wouldn't mind kissing Burt Reynolds. You wouldn't? No, Are you a girl or a boy? Pardon? Are you? Is this a pet or a girl or a boy? I'm a girl. Oh, okay. Just checking. As I said, I got nine. I've got. Oh, nine that's right. Children. You got nine. Well, you could still be a guy named Pat. You know the. And I've got sixteen grandchildren and ah. two more on the way. You got well, a big. You got a big holiday coming, huh, Pat? Yes, you do. Well, you oh, have a happy. Oh, please don't remind me. <laughs> okay, Pat. I'm glad you called and thanks for watching us. Okay. Thank you and Thank Merry, you. Christmas Merry Christmas to you, Christmas to you Pat. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. Good night, young lady. The tabloids love to write about you, don't they? Yeah, yeah they yeah. do. Well, I'm a perfect subject, you know. They sure. they sell to, you know, a lot of people and uh, like a lot of white trash people. <laughs> and I grew up in that. I'm sort of like the queen of the tabloids. <laughs> the kind of people they sell to usually are the people that in the way that I grew up, Middle America, you know, poor people. Mm -hmm. and so I'm like, the, they love to talk about me because I'll talk about anything. I'll tell them anything they want to know and what they. Don't want to know. Do they, they ever anger up. you with stuff that they write? For example, if they would write about your family rather than you? Yes. Yeah. It, that is the only thing. I don't really care what they say about me because I find some of my best comedy out of stuff that they write. Because yeah. they do, you know, they they will write stories that are based on a you know thread of truth. But by the time they're done with it, it's so frayed you wouldn't know the story. <laughs> but when they talk about my family or friends or drag other wonderful people into a story that are totally innocent. That really bothers me because they don't know how to handle it. It's really caused a lot of sorrow, you know, in, in my family and with friends. How did the tour go that you did for Treasures when you went out and did, went to the radio stations? Because yeah. you and I both know radio stations, if, if you're over 25 or 30, they don't want to hear about you. Well, that's true. Country music has really changed a lot. But yeah. this new CD is, uh, it, the reason it's called Treasures, I chose a bunch of songs that I've loved for years. I didn't write any of these songs. They're classic songs that I did. So I went out trying to promote this and I went to all around to different stations and different marketing places just to see if, you know, if that would make a difference. And then mm -hmm. I had the CBS special on. Didn't make any difference. <laughs> I still they still <laughs> ain't going flat. It's doing pretty good, That's but it's okay. not it's not doing great. But that just goes to show you if you if you ain't got something they want to buy, it don't make no difference how much you promote it. They ain't going to buy, buy it. Right. You don't know how many of us were cheering for your success when you did the variety show in prime time <laughs> over at the... No, I'm serious. Oh, I know. All of us wanted you to win there, and it didn't. I'm, I read a story about you in the press this afternoon that you will now live in Los Angeles until you crack prime time television. <laughs> true or false? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to do a sitcom, though. I'm not going to try another variety show. I think it was just... We didn't know at that time. We thought maybe it would still work, and I wanted to do a, a little different kind of variety show than we actually wound up doing. Everybody in Hollywood, I think, wanted to still cling to that dream of the old variety shows, because we all hated to see it go. I just wasn't the person that could pull it off, but I, I don't regret it. It was a heartache at the time. It was a lot of hard work, but it's television is very hard, but I am going to give it another shot with a 30-minute a sitcom, and uh, it will also be on CBS. Oh, really? Uh-huh, and so I don't know for sure if we're going to get it. We have been trying very hard to get it ready for mid-season, which is like March, but it mm -hmm. may not we may not have it ready. Well, there'll be an fall. opening or two in March, I can tell you now. That they'll be, they'll <laughs> yeah, be... <laughs> maybe, but I don't know if I'll be ready because I don't want it to go on. None of us do until it's right. You know, when I, the, the only time I've ever met you, we were on the, on the Jay Leno show over at the other network yeah. some years ago. Yeah. And every time that I see you, you have a smile on your face. <laughs> Are you ever down? Oh, sure. You know, I have a happy heart. I think I was born yeah. with, a, with a happy heart. But my little heart's very tender, too. So when I hurt, I hurt all over. And I've had many hard times. I've had a lot of, uh, you know, hard knocks and, and all that. But I, I have a good attitude. I won't let myself wallow around in that sorrow so long it, it kills me. But I went through a period of time back in the 80s where I was uh, had some, a lot of female problems. And I was had a... It had medication and the different things with that it caused me a lot of depression i was fat as a hog yeah you fought, hated you, you, myself yeah you, you fought know, poundage for a while yeah I, oh, I was fat as a bear and i just you know i didn't feel good about myself had some personal problems going on at the time 
kind of lost some good friends and I felt kind of betrayed, you know, just kind of poor, pitiful me. Yeah. Got myself really in a sad, Everybody hates down me, mood. nobody yeah. loves me. I think I'll go out and eat some worms. Yeah, I think, no, yeah. I think I'll go out and eat some cheeseburgers <laughs> and some pizzas <laughs> and all that. But anyway, so I, I went through a real hard time and I just finally said, you know, get off your fat ass and do something about it <laughs> or go blow your head off and get on out of it, but yeah. do something. So I did and, and I, that was the first time in my life I really had a, real bad time, but it lasted almost two years, like 18 months, two yeah. years. Did you go to doctors or psychologists, see a little Well, no, or? I didn't go to psychiatrists, but I, I had some medical problems. I did go to doctors, and right. I had to pray a lot. I had uh, to really go inside myself and work out a lot of stuff. I'd been going so fast, too. See, I, I started on radio and TV when I was 10, being brought up the way I was in a very, you know, poor family and the kind of background I had. And it was almost like a I worked hard, but it was still like a fairy tale, and I, sure, I guess I'd sure. been going so fast, you know, I hadn't really ever been knocked down, so I was like in my mid-30s, and all of a sudden, it was like time to, you know, to pay step, the fiddler yeah, and step yeah. back and look at it. And so I, I look at it now, and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, go be Granny Claus to all your loved little <laughs> ones and have a great Christmas season. By the Thank way... You. Uh, Alan Carr in his house has a room which he calls the I, the I Honestly Love You room. Remember the great song, the great yes, hit he had with Olivia Newton-John? Uh -huh, sure. Do you have an I Honestly Love You wing in your house? <laughs> well, no, but I have an I'll, I Will Always Love You wing. I Will wing. Always yeah. Love You wing. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I don't have a wing, but I have been very fortunate with that. So thanks to Whitney Houston and David Foster and Kevin Costner for making that <laughs> making this a good Christmas, and I think I'll have several good Christmases with that, but I was very proud of that. I'm, I've been very fortunate in this business, and this, I have a lot to be thankful for. You are also an extremely talented and gifted person, and I thank the world of you, and I wish you a Merry Christmas, and well, thanks for joining us. you're a fine us. man, too, and I thank you for the compliments, and good luck to you, and happy holidays. My pleasure, ma'am. Dolly Parton is the guest. She's an unlikely angel on CBS on the 17th of December, and her CD, which could use a little boost now, is called <laughs> Treasures, and it's a story. Yeah, it's pushing for me, Tom, pushing for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'll, I'll take care of the CD, too. We'll be right back with Bill Bell after these messages.